Hello, I'm Julian Whittle from Cumbria Chamber of Commerce and I'm with Claire Phillips and Simon Kirkbride, both of Dodd & Co, the accountants. Uh, and we're here to discuss making tax digital. Now, this is going to require businesses, and that definition includes buy-to-let landlords. It will require them to use computer software to maintain their accounting records and then send quarterly updates to HM Revenue and Customs. So, why is government doing this? Is it about saving money? The government have said that uh, they're introducing this new making tax digital system to, to make it easier for individuals and businesses to get the tax right and to keep on top of their affairs. They're also trying to reduce the tax gap, which um, is believed to be around £8 billion a year. What do you mean by the tax gap? Well, that's the, in theory the lost revenue between um, uh, the tax due mm -hmm. and what's actually declared and, and paid over. Right. Um, so the HMRC are hoping that this system will reduce those taxpayer sort of mistakes and errors. Okay. So making tax digital is being phased in starting next April uh, with VAT. So explaining w what is happening then? To be honest, everything is still a little bit up in the air. There's a lot more questions than we've actually got answers for at the moment. HMRC are expected to provide clarity um, by the end of the summer so businesses know what they need to be doing. In-house here we do have an MTD team which is following everything that's happening and trying to keep our clients informed as we're going along. Right. As far as we know from 1st of April 2019 all VAT registered businesses with turnover over the 85,000 threshold yeah. will have to submit their quarterly returns via a new digital account rather than the existing government gateway. Right. So 1st of April is the start of your VAT period, so if you're on monthly VAT, your first return that will be affected is the 30th of April. Yeah. If you are quarterly, it will be your July return. And what it will mean for businesses is they have to set up a digital account and have end-to-end -end software to enable submission. So this means information goes into the system, it gets processed and the return is submitted from the same place. Okay, now you said this is for businesses ab above the VAT threshold. What about those below? Presumably they're not affected, but I wondered what about those who are below the threshold but have voluntarily registered for VAT? Where do they stand? Yeah, so, so it's only businesses with turnover over the VAT threshold and who are VAT registered that are going to be mandated from April 19. So if you're a business with turnover under the VAT threshold, um, you won't be mandated in April 19, even if you have voluntarily registered for VAT. Right. Okay. And the, the plan is, for the, at the moment anyway, as I said, it's all a bit up in the air at the minute, but these businesses that are voluntarily registered, it's looking like April 2020 is going to be the date they're going to be mandated. Okay, so what about, or do we know when making tax digital will be extended to cover income tax, corporation tax, PAYE and so on? Is that still up in the air. Yeah, start with the easy one. Mm -hmm. As far as we're aware, page one isn't expected to change because they're already under RTI, which is real-time information. Right. Um, income tax and corporation tax are meant to be from periods starting on or after 1st of April 2020, but that depends on what you read in the press. Um, I think a lot rests on how successful VAT goes next April. Yes, so they'll, the, yeah, they can be flexible, I suppose. But but it's looking like twenty twenty for 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 the if you like the wider net. Mm. Um, have we any idea what proportion of businesses are already using accounting software, and how many are still using manual systems? I mean, I've heard anecdotally there are a lot of farmers in this area who are still <laughs> using manual systems. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one to quantify this. It depends what kind of business you're looking at. Mm. As you say, farming uh, potentially a lot lower than you know other larger businesses. Mm. But overall, it's believed to be around 30 to 40 percent of businesses that uh, are currently using some sort of accounting software. So that's really surprising. I, I, I'd, I'd have thought it would be a lot more. You know, I'd have thought it'd be virtually everybody who's using accounting software, but but not that's not the There's case. There's a lot of a lot of small mm. businesses. Uh, using carry bags full of invoices and things you know that there's a still a lot of those about so yeah those are the really the type of people who need to you know really um, engage with this and, and change what they're doing so what what are the software requirements I suppose in other words what will it be expected to do and will HMRC be providing any free software so HMRC keep talking about end-to-end -end software which means it's all going in the same place and being submitted from there 
usual accounting packages are making themselves compliant as we speak cloud software is leading the way at the moment mm -hmm. and that's bringing um, automated automation of data entry along with it to make it easier the plan for all of them is submission which is just going to be a summary of the transactions I think there's lots of stuff out there saying it's every single transaction and mm -hmm. um, it will just be at the click of a button we have a specialist cloud accounting team in-house working with our clients at the moment trying to get them on the software that is right for them because as a firm we don't see that one size fits all mm. people need specialist um, packages yeah HMRC have said they won't provide free software but that something should be made available for those very small very simple mm. businesses um, there's nothing mandated for any free software for VAT at all so it's really down to whether a developer wants to give it away for nothing Right, oh well, we'll have to watch, <laughs> watch this space as it were, yeah. But what, what about businesses that are using spreadsheets to keep their records? Will they be able to carry on doing so? Will they have to switch to something else? Yes, yeah, so there was a bit of confusion over this initially, but uh, but yes, HMRC have said that spreadsheets will be compliant with making tax digital, so, so that's definitely a positive thing to take from it. It's, it's likely that you're going to need some sort of bridging software um, we don't know much about this yet, but this is in theory a, a, a bit of software in the middle between the spreadsheet and HMRC mm -hmm. that pulls the data from the spreadsheet and gives it to, to the revenue. So, as I say, we don't know too much on that yet, but uh, hopefully over the next few months we'll uh, know more. Okay. So will businesses have to make and store invoices and receipts digitally? It depends who you speak to. I've heard both. Um, <laughs> Although we were listening to something from the ICAEW, which is the Institute of Chartered Accountants, mm. where they said it's about recording transactions digitally, not mm. just storing them digitally. Right. So hopefully we'll get some clarity from HMRC pretty soon. Okay. And now, making, making tax digital requires businesses to submit information quarterly to HMRC. Do they have the option of providing information more frequently than that? And what would be the advantages of doing so? Uh, yes, the the quarterly requirement is a minimum requirement. Uh, you can opt to submit more regularly if you like. So you can do it monthly, weekly, or even daily if you really wanted to. Mm. Um, I think realistically, most businesses are probably going to opt to do it quarterly. They, mm. they don't really want to be doing any more work mm. than they have to. But um, ultimately, HMRC have um, said that they're going to have a live tax calculator mm. on this system. So. I guess once that feature is introduced, um, there may be some benefit of you know submitting more regularly to, to keep on top of your tax. Um. About the VAT flat rate and annual accounting schemes, how will they be affected by this? The only change to them should be the way that they're actually being filed now. Um, so any software that the business is using, if they're on that scheme, they've got to make sure the software can deal with it. Okay. And what about retailers? Will they have to record every transaction? Uh, HMRC have said that retailers only need to record their gross daily takings digitally rather than every single transaction, so mm. that, that is a welcome relaxation to, to, for smaller businesses. Okay, and what about amendments? How will businesses correct errors under making tax digital? Again, we're still waiting for guidance on it, but we have been told that usual VAT rules apply. So we can only therefore assume that if you've got a VAT amendment to make, it's done in the way that it is now, which mm -hmm. will be next VAT return or a voluntary declaration if it's a really big error. Okay, so we've got 10 months before all this starts. What should businesses be doing now to make sure they are prepared? Yeah, 10 months sounds like a long time, doesn't it? But um, I think, you know, if you are a business who are who is VAT registered and you have turnover over that £85,000 VAT threshold, then by April 19, you will need to start keeping digital records. If you're already doing this, then, then great. But, but if not, I think you need to be speaking to your accountant sooner rather than later to, to go through your options and uh, get you all set up and ready to go from next April. At, uh, at Dodd Co, we are prioritizing our clients who currently have very sort of manual systems. Yeah. Um, they're the first group who will need to make the biggest changes in terms of their systems. Uh, we've got a dedicated making tax digital team that are guiding our clients through this process. So if there's anybody else out there who need any help on this, uh, feel free to get in touch. Okay, excellent. Claire and Simon, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.